four years old. I had a female friend. At that time, she was very far older than I. So one day, we were just playing in the children's room. She dipped her hand inside of me. She did this not once and not twice. After some months, I started having... I started experiencing some things. The Fistula Center at the Calabar General was established by UNFPA and the state government to offer free Fistula treatment services to women and girls in the southern part of the state. The existing Fistula Center in Ogoja, northern part of the state, was a five hour, 22 minute drive away by road. We heard from the State Ministry of Health official, Dr. Comfort, who discussed the prevalence of Fustilla in Cross River State and the access to care before establishment of the Calabar Center. Cross River State is vast, and um, it has a vast area of coverage. Ogoja is at the extreme north of Cross River State, and then Calabar, the extreme south of Cross River State and we have other neighboring states interfacing with Cross River State. So the two centers are to ensure maximum coverage and these services are free and they are being supported by UNFPA. So that is why we have the two centers in Cross River State. The center made the VVF services accessible, easily accessible to the people. If you are in the north and all the states around, I mean, all the LGS around Ogoja, the northern part of the state, you know that you can just pay a token to get to Ogoja Center, both girls and women. As this center has been made available, what the government of the day uh, ensures in support with UNFPA is continuous sensitization, continuous health education, continuous making the people to know that such services are available. They are now lending themselves available for the repairs. And we have a lot of success stories. We have a lot of success stories. Dr. Ai Itim also discussed his training facilitated by UNFPA at National Fistula Center Abakaliki and how people from all over the nation and even neighboring countries like Cameroon trooped into Calabar to receive free treatment. We look at the word obstetric fistula. Uh, first and foremost, the obstetric means issues that concerns women in reproductive age during delivery either during normal delivery or during surgical intervention. For that to happen, it means there is an, an abnormal connection between the bladder and the vagina or between the rectum and the vagina. And that's why we have two types of fistula. One is a fecal fistula which is where you have abnormal connection between the rectum and the vagina that develops either during prolonged obstructed labor or during surgical intervention. Then we have the one we simply call urine fistula, which is the one that involves the bladder and the vagina. The urine fistula is simply what we call vesicovaginal vagina fistula, which is VVF. By the fecal fistula is what we refer to as rectal vagina fistula. Um, after I came back um, from Egypt as a plastic surgeon, 
um, I noticed that there was a center to Goja, um, but it was a pool effort center. Um, my training was at National Obstetric Festival at Bakaleki. So UNFPA had actually followed up that training. They made sure that I, I, I completed the number of months. We spent three months there. And they make sure they followed up back to this hospital. Because um, one thing is for you to get trained. Another thing is for you to do what you were trained on. And we noticed that most people get trained and then come back and sit down. After six months, they will lose the skill. So the aim of the training is completely defeated. But UNFPI had made sure that we came back and they were able to support us in collaboration with the state government for this centre to become a, a reality. We completed our training in 2015 and the centre uh, came into action, was inaugurated in 2016. Uh, UNFPA uh, and the supporting partners had been the driving force as far as this centre is concerned because they make sure that we're trained and we're given a place, we're given the tools to work with and they're given all the machinery to get the patients and giving them what to do to get back to the society in a, a very happy mood. Eno Fistula Survivor who is now fully reintegrated into society as a tailor after receiving empowerment training, tells us how the fistula affected her social relationships and how she faced stigma from her surrounding communities. The experience I have for my life is when I deliver a child, something come out. Everybody laugh on me. My family, leave me, don't take any good care for me. Even my husband, run and leave me. I survive with my only one child. The message to women, I tell them I have blood plan on 10 September 2020. If anybody have that blood plan to come to VVF contact Calabar. Esther tells us of her experience struggling with the patient and her perception of her relationship with the survivor pre and post treatment. Even when the thing come out, she will use a wrapper, one wrapper, one full wrapper, and roll it like this and put it inside a private part. And that wrapper immediately, like three seconds, the thing will be soak. So I now remove the thing. I say, let me smell this thing. I want to know what is this. Then I, I, I take that thing, that wrapper, and smell it. And the thing is uh, smelling like urine. I now tell her that this is uh, your bladder, or your bladder has burst out. So there is nothing that we can do. Let me just find a way, if there is any place that I can take you so that they will go and cure you. I now took her to the uh, 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 teaching hospital first. When we w went there, we went there with the sum of uh, 7,000 naira. Then we bought a card. Then the doctor told us that, she, that he will admit her in the hospital, that uh, there is no need for her to go back home, that we should go and bring 30,000 deposit. I say, no, doctor, there is no money with us, so that we left with only 4,000 naira. Then the doctor now laughed at us. I went to one place. When I went to one place, then I now narrate the story to one lady like that. So the woman tells us that we should not worry, that everything will be soft in general hospital. So the next day, the woman take us there. When the woman take us there, then it's there that they go and admit her. And it was for free. They did not collect any one naira. It was for free. They treated her for free. So that is the, how the thing was take happen. So I really thank God for it. UNFPA head office in Calabar, Dr. Omala Sho, discussed his role at UNFPA and the efforts of UNFPA towards preventing fistula occurrences in Cross River State and the Southeast Zone. He also told us some of the root causes of fistula, lack of gender equality and early 
marriage taking the forefront. Well, uh, when we talk about prevention, we should first look at the basic causes of um, fistula. And um, one of the recognized causes is um, prolonged obstructed liver. And um, prolonged obstructed liver is usually found in women that have either small pelvis or underdeveloped pelvis. Uh, most cases are women that are under the age of 18 who, um, when they get married and they get pregnant, the head of the baby, you know, cannot pass through the pelvis. So we try to sensitize the government to prevent child marriage, which is one of the major causes of obstetric fistula. We not only work with the government, we also work with communities to sensitize them uh, against um, practices like child marriage. So amongst other things that we do, you know, to prevent uh, obstetric fistula, uh, and that's in the primary prevention level. Of course, at the secondary level, we try as much as possible to, to treat cases that we see uh, so that they don't become a nuisance uh, in the community. We find that um, most of the interventions to manage fistula, not only in Calabar, but across the country is uh, donor driven. So we try to, um, you know, convince the government to add a line for the treatment of obstetric fistula in their annual budgets. So that, um, you know, when the funding from donors are not there, they can use their budgets their own funding to sustain it. Um, it's unfortunate that um, not many governments realize the, the social and health effects of obstetric fistula. And um, we are supporting the government presently in Calabar, in Cross River State, to upgrade the fistula center. Uh, make it, um, in fact, into a center of excellence uh, so that um, the government may see that it is important, you know, to put some money into it to complement the efforts that we're doing and also to make sure that it sustain the place. Eighteen and local government, which is at Akwaibom State, but was born here in Kalaba. They met, it was a true, it was true a campaign. So the campaign was just around where I'm staying. That's how my grandma took me there and the next year. Miss Elizabeth, she directed us down here to the hospital. So that's how I met the center. Four years old. I had a female friend. So she was just a neighbor. At that time, she was very far older than I. So one day, we were just playing in the children's room. She dipped her hand instead of me. She did this not once and not twice. After some months, I started having, I started experiencing some things. My family, they, they accepted me very well. They treated me very good. Only that I had no friends. My friends were just despising me. And I was always, always isolated in the class because they were just laughing at me, so I was on my own, I had no friend. 
they treated me very so because no none of them since none of them had experienced such a thing like this so none of them who came close to me i was just alone i had no friend i am feeling okay and by the grace of god i know i'll be fine I want to say a very big thank you for making the campaign, not just for me alone, but for women also who went into child laboring and they had the problem. Since they had no money to sponsor for the surgery and the organization made it very free for all of them to be here so that they will be treated for free.